Do you want to live forever? Yeah! Well, you asked for it. Scientists all over the world are trying to extend human life as much as possible. But the technologies that give eternal life are not as simple and safe as we would like. Today on Brain Frame, we will raise the curtain after treating it with an antiseptic and tell about the frightening word singularity. Find out if it is possible to freeze a person in a cryo chamber and extract them a hundred years later, like broccoli from a refrigerator, and whether it is possible to transfer consciousness to a computer or even a robot. Remember to put your mask on. Let's go. Over thousands of years of its existence, mankind has reached incredible heights in science. We plunged into the abyss of the ocean and found new forms of life. We landed on the moon and did not find anything there. We invented great things – penicillin, smartphones, nanorobots, cars, planes, microprocessors, nuclear weapons, and the bathroom rubber duck. Still, one peak remains unconquered for us. Immortality. A person born in 1960, this year the UN began collecting data on the entire planet, would normally have a lifespan of 52.5 years. Today, life expectancy is 72 years on average. There's no point drawing comparison to the distant past, where dying from old age was a good fate compared to 30 billion slowly killing diseases or an abrupt end by a blade of a drunken knight. And by the way, the fact that in the past people rarely lived to see 40 is a myth, but we'll talk about it some other time. In the meantime, let's deal with the question at hand. Why are we getting old anyway? Today, scientific studies show that aging was originally recorded in the body's genetic program, i.e. in the chromosomes. To continue life, damaged organs and tissues are updated by reproducing through cell division. At the time of creation, cells are endowed with a certain division limit. And when this limit is reached, the cells lose their ability to divide and multiply, and then the aging process starts. The aged cell that's incapable of dividing eventually dies. Over time, aging spreads completely and irrevocably to the whole body. Over the years, people's health deteriorates. They lose their former physical strength and endurance, their senses and memory weaken, and the body gradually begins to prepare for an unpleasant meeting with the Grim Reaper. In fact, aging is a kind of disease, which means nothing can stop the valiant warriors in white coats from inventing the elixir of immortality or the injection of eternal life. All we have to do is to stay alive until that moment. Write in the comments how many years you would like to live, and most importantly, why. And neither sports nor a healthy lifestyle will help us survive. Who needs this medieval nonsense? Our choice is genetic engineering. Don't be afraid, no one is going to crossbreed you with a tortoise for now. Today, scientists are working closely with cell division, trying to study and acquire a detailed understanding of the telomere phenomenon protective thimbles at the end of chromosomes, which are shortened with each cell division. Telomeres consist of a nucleotide sequence that is not read to its very end with each subsequent division and therefore becomes shorter, just like human life. This effect was called the Hayflick limit by the name of the scientist who in the early 60s established that cells can divide only a limited number of times. Moreover, the maximum number of divisions strongly depends on the age of the person to whom these cells originally belong. So the cells that were taken from newborns divide 80 to 90 times, and in a 70-year-old person, only 20 to 30 times. In general, almost all of our cells are mortal, like us. But at the same time, there are immortal cells in our body. For example, stem cells. They can turn into any cell of the body. In other words, stem cells are a team of substitutes always ready to replace the cells that failed due to illness or injury. Sex cells also need to be immortal because they give life to a new person. 
There are 37 trillion 200 billion cells in an adult person. To get this amount, the very first fertilized egg must be divided at least 45 times. But what's next? How to recover damaged tissue? Are telomeres strong enough? In 1984, scientists answered this question and isolated an enzyme that synthesizes telomeric DNA, i.e. prevents telomeres from shortening. This enzyme is called telomerase. Cells in which telomerase functions, for example, sex cells and, surprise, surprise, cancer cells, are immortal. In ordinary cells, of which the body is mainly composed, telomerase does not work, so the telomeres are shortened during each cell division, which ultimately leads to its death. In 1998, researchers from the University of Texas inserted the telomerase gene into the cells of the skin, visual and vascular epithelium of a person, where the enzyme does not work under normal conditions. In such genetically modified cells, telomerase was in working condition. It attached nucleotide sequences to the terminal sections of DNA, so the telomere length did not change from division to division. This way, scientists were able to increase the life of ordinary human cells by 150%. So what? Have we really found the very elixir of immortality that will allow us to pay mortgage for millennia? Yes and no. The fact is that telomerase is one of the main factors of malignant degeneration of cells, i.e. cancer. Cancer cells are immortal due to the fact that telomerase works in them. This is why immortality and cancer seem to balance each other. An immortal organism can theoretically live forever, but it will inevitably die from cancer. Perhaps in the future we will be able to overcome this boundary set by Mother Nature herself. Luckily, today genetic engineering is not the only way to achieve immortality. Are we forever stuck in our short-lived bodies whose shelf life is shorter than that of canned army food? It would seem that a great way out is to copy our consciousness onto a medium and transfer it to a new one when the body dies, just like cortical stack from altered carbon. However, such technologies are too complex. They are unlikely to appear in the foreseeable future. But transferring of consciousness into a robot, like in the movie Chappie, no longer seems so fantastic. That's a watch. Futurologist and Google CTO Ray Kurzweil claims that by 2045, technology will be at such a high stage that humanity, in a biological sense, and artificial intelligence will merge into a post-human reality called singularity. This moment will be the culmination of the fusion of our biological thinking and existence with high technology. As a result, the world will still be human, but already separated from its biological roots. After the onset of the singularity, there will be no boundaries between man and machine, between the physical and the virtual. Many scientists disagree with Kurzweil and believe that firstly, the date, 2045, of the futurologist is too optimistic and the technology will not develop so quickly. Secondly, even in the future, computers will not be able to process all the data of the human brain. They also argue that such a technology is not possible from a biological point of view, since the brain directly depends on the biological body. While scientists are at each other's collars fiercely debating the topic, shifts toward the merger of people and machines are already taking place. In 2004, as a result of an accident, a man named Nathan Copeland received a severe spinal injury, which deprived the young man of the ability to move and live fully. Scientists from DARPA reached Nathan and performed an operation to introduce a neural interface into his brain to control robotic limbs. Nathan's interface acts unlike Elon Musk's prototype, Neuralink, which connects to the brain using dozens of thin wires and needs to be small enough to be inside the skull and transmit the signal wirelessly. You can learn more about Neuralink in the video on the pop-up above. Nathan's interface, on the other hand, consists of four pointed silicon electrode pads in his brain, the so-called Utah arrays, connected with the outside world through the sockets on this head. They allow him to control robots and computers, and their senses return to his brain. 
In 2016, Nathan held out an artificial brain-controlled arm to Barack Obama, while the censors allowed Nathan to feel the handshake of the 44th President of the United States. Prospects for neural interfaces look promising. Beside the fact that right now they make people's lives more comfortable, in the future everyone will be able to benefit from them. Would you transfer your consciousness into a robot? By the way, maybe we should make a separate video about the merging of man and machine. Write in the comments. Okay, we cannot extend the life of our body for hundreds of years, and we're still very, very far from loading consciousness into a computer. But what if you just freeze yourself for a thousand years? and then get out of the refrigerator, when you've outlived everyone you owe money to and Uber now delivers directly to Saturn. You've seen this multiple times in science fiction films, from aliens and passengers, where the characters plunge into the cryosleep for many years to cover huge distances and wake up without a single gray hair. And it does sound like fiction, but hundreds of people immersed in the cryosleep all over the planet tend to argue. If they wake up, of course. In the meantime, while frozen patients wait for the new season of The Walking Dead, let's split a block of ice called cryonics and see what's inside. Could be broccoli. First of all, we need to figure out the terms. The science of cryobiology is a branch of biology that studies the effect of low and ultra-low temperatures on living organisms. Cryobiologists methodically investigate how the cold affects the body. Cryoprotection, resistance to cold, regeneration of organs and tissues after low temperature injuries. Cryonics, however, arose more as an idea based on scientific knowledge. The father of cryonics, Robert Edinger, wrote his famous book The Prospect of Immortality in 1962. In his book, Edinger developed the concept of suspended death. In his opinion, the process of <clears throat> dying is not an instant event, but has a certain length in time, and this process can be artificially stopped at a reversible stage. For a patient immersed in liquid nitrogen, the aging process stops. A frozen patient starts a kind of time travel into the future of our civilization, when, thanks to scientific progress, it is possible that the next generations of doctors and cryobiologists will be able to revive them and make them young and healthy. Having founded the Cryonics Institute in 1976, Edinger kept spreading his ideas until the end of his days, generating more and more followers. Nowadays, the Cryonics Institute, Immortalist Society and the Alcor Life Extension Foundation are best known in the modern world as organizations that develop cryonics ideas and put them into practice. However, so far no cryo company provides any guarantees for defrosting, thus turning the entire procedure into voluntary euthanasia. A paid one, of course. Alcor Life Extension Foundation members conclude contracts for long-term storage in liquid nitrogen as an act of donation of their body for research purposes, which complies with all U.S. laws. Companies such as Alcor, where, by the way, the body of the first cryopatient is stored, not only successfully send people to visit Disney's Elsa, but also make good money on it. Move, Sharon, our boat is much more comfortable. The aforementioned Alcor takes $200,000 for cryopreservation of the whole body, while the Cryonics Institute only about $30,000. Your brain will be frozen separately for $80,000. Some even give you a bracelet as a gift. How cute. Nowadays, cryonics only raises questions, but does not answer them. Will patients wake up? Will the brain survive? What happens if the electricity shuts down for a month? Who will finally wake them up? Will these people be able to get used to the society of the future, like this red-haired kid? The refrigerator's quiet hum is the only response we get so far. And by the way, press like if you're a Futurama fan too. And if you don't like it, then stop watching immediately. What's wrong with you anyway? God. So today we learned why our bodies wear out ate sweets with real cyborgs, froze in a cryo chamber, and even looked into the future in an attempt to understand 
can we become immortal? And although technologies are developing by leaps and bounds, we cannot know for sure what awaits us in 30 or 50 years. And therefore, perhaps we should ask another question. Does a person need immortality in general? Trying to push the limits of what is possible and looking towards the future, we forget about the problems of the present. Hunger, war, and disease are still terrible enemies of mankind. And until we deal with them, thinking about immortality is at least unproductive. Write in the comments what you think about immortality and what technologies we missed. Subscribe in order not to miss new videos, so that you have something to entertain yourself if you suddenly become immortal. And don't forget, always think outside the frame.